It was essentially to try to monitor year on year what's happening in terms of the Northern Ireland peace process and to see you know, what's happening in all of those different sectors like housing and education and so on to see whether we're moving forwards or whether we're in fact moving backwards. And of course, this is the problem from the outside. It's very difficult. People have found it difficult to know whether we are moving forward. Something like the handshake between the Queen and Martin McGuinness would suggest that we are in it. Something like the uh, rats in our dying would suggest that we're not. So we seem to be moving forwards and backwards at the same time. Um, and very often the Northern Ireland peace process to outsiders and indeed to uh, people here can look a bit like, you know those drawings by Escher where you have people ascending a staircase and the same people mysteriously are also descending. This is a sort of optical illusion thing. If you look at it one way, you can see them going up. If you look at it another way, you see them going down. So that's how the peace process seems. So the basic idea was to try to get the measure of it and see what is actually happening. Are we moving forward or backward? And to do this uh, on an annual basis, hence the term monitoring. So that's how the idea was got up. That was the original idea. It was really the result of that process I've just described where we thought, well, how do you measure this? And we decided that there's all sorts of indicators. I mean, there's you know, everything from the number of people involved in a riot to the number of uh, young people who go to outdoor festivals to the number of people who are on uh, income support. I mean, all of the... Where do you begin? And we decided we had to take a lot of these indicators and group them uh, under you know, kind of aggregate headings. And the four that we chose were security, equality, political progress, and then cohesion. Now, when we looked at that, after we arrived at that as a way of ordering the, the data, we realized that actually um, equality is really a key concept for Republicans, uh, while for unionists, Security is the key concept, and 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 that's not surprising that you know you would have this difference of emphasis. I mean, if you if you look at the Middle East, for example, uh, the key concept for Israelis is security, whereas for Palestinians, the key concept is justice. And in fact, this replicates itself throughout the world. Where generally speaking, everybody wants political progress, but then. Um, the right tends to put an emphasis on order and security. The left tends to put an, order, an emphasis on uh, justice, uh, equality. Um, liberals everywhere put an emphasis on social cohesion and uh, inclusion. So the, the, the four that we come up with, we come up with, with reference specifically to Northern Ireland. But having said that, the ones that uh, would you could have a dialogue with the, the measurement of peace processes anywhere else using using this for I think a lot of the report I don't think people would find that surprising but there are parts of it where I was surprised I mean for example and I'll give you uh, some examples of this the degree of um, social deprivation um, and the differential between Catholics and Protestants is much more pronounced than I had expected it to be. I had thought that the you know the, the period of uh, prosperity that came just after the, the signing of the peace agreement, um, you know the economic boom, which was in some ways independent, which was that's what helped feed it. Um, I thought it had lifted all boats more than it has, and I was surprised because actually. That, that differential, the, the continuing sort of inequality, um, doesn't tend to get featured a lot in political discourse here. Not by, uh, well, not by unionists, you wouldn't expect it, but uh, not, not very much by Sinn Féin, actually, or, or, or the SDLP. I find that surprising. I find it surprising. The, uh, the use of uh, stop and search bars in Northern Ireland is so extraordinarily high. Uh, again, something that no one has commented upon. And I have to add, incidentally, that another thing that surprised me was after the report was published, the response to it, that um, people didn't seem to pick up on some of the things that I thought 
more surprising and more interesting. They did, they did tend to pick up on the things that were already perhaps in the public domain. And maybe I shouldn't be surprised by that because while we like to think that uh, research um, actually challenges people or that, you know, if you do, if you produce objective data, that it will influence people in actual fact. Very often people when presented with uh, a digest of uh, new information will simply read it in order to get the information that supports their existing analysis. I think that happens so often. I think it is a cold piece, but, you know, just to, to, to give it some perspective, it is a um, piece compared to where we were um, in the 80s, compared to where we were in the 70s, and I'm one of those people who's actually been here and lived through the troubles, and uh, if I turn up here on a bright sunny morning like this, I know I can cycle into this area without any fear um, that I might not be able to cycle out. That wasn't always the case. And, uh, you know, we have made enormous strides, and it does have to be said, uh, because it isn't actually said very often, that uh, this is the, the, the single most successful peace process in the world, in, you know, in, in the last 20 years. I mean, this situation was always described as intractable, um, and it turned out to be tractable. And so it's a remarkable achievement. It is a truly remarkable achievement. People haven't quite learned a lot each other yet, um, and that's what we have to encourage them to do. But, but to, to give a perspective, uh, you know, peace is better than war. Um, we now have peace with, of course, you know, violence continuing. That, that's not surprising. I mean, you know, we shouldn't be too disappointed uh, to learn that. Um, but we would like to see more by way of the building of shared identities. We would like to see more by way of tolerance, by way of accommodation, by way of people seeing their future as being, to use the phrase, a shared future. Um, and that's what I want to find out. I mean, I, I, I'm not putting forward a political program here. I'm simply here to kind of measure whether or not we're getting that. I think if we see that as being, uh, if you like, the old paradigm, the new paradigm is, um, one where we have new communities who have arrived, uh, where many of the younger people um, now want to escape the birth identities and want to kind of find other ways to to realise themselves in the world. And uh, all of these things, I think, are healthy. I mean, I, I think all of these things are, are taking us in the right direction. But what we can't ignore, and certainly when I was measuring things, uh, I did always look to see, well, What's the impact uh, of this on, 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 on Protestant Catholics? If we're looking at the labour force, for example, if we're looking at unemployment, we want to see well, you know, who's being hit, for example, by obsessions impacting Protestants more than Catholics, because we know that that's the central tension. So we have to attend to it. But I think we're moving to to a society of some greater complexity and richness. The Belfast uh, that I knew during the Troubles was a place of dark little bars. People were confined to their areas. And now you get this kind of something that I guess other cities, um, your city, Barcelona, is actually in the city, perhaps one of the cities in the world was associated with that kind of, um, that kind of pleasure-seeking um, cosmopolitan culture. And if Northern Ireland can inch even a little bit towards that, it's a good thing. And some of the changes, it's worth saying, is I think that some of the things that have been most positive in Northern Ireland in terms of developing that culture have been um, the, the accidental byproducts of, of uh, these, these things aren't run by the Community Relations Council. I mean, these are developers and business people who set up cafes, clubs, run festivals, or whatever. But the, the, the effect of them is to help develop a new set of identities, you know, for young people who don't go into the city centre um, most of the year wearing orange sashes or, or Celtic tops. They go in um, wearing, you know, um, fashionable clothing <laughs> to, to participate in nightlife. And it's all healthy, it's all good. And, and I think something is changing there. 
I mean, one of the one of the criticisms people made of my report when I come out was to say, well, that, that kind of cappuccino culture, um, that's just for the middle classes. I mean, and and yeah, I mean that's a that's a fair point. I mean, I accept that, but middle classes are still real people. Um, and this expansion that's taking place of the city centre, of the neutral areas in the city centre, I mean, if you go now from the new Titanic quarter through, go across to the new uh, art centre in Mac, I mean, this is quite a, quite a journey now. I mean, the Titanic centre um, is actually situated right on the shipyard where the Titanic was built, which of course was also um, the bastion of, of, of of, of Protestant privilege in the labour market, no more hostile environment for Catholics could be imagined. Um, and now, you know, you go down there on a Sunday and there doesn't seem to be any chill factor for Catholics. Um, and, and, and you can take that right across the city. And all of this, I think, is positive, and I'm only describing Belfast, but the same thing can be said as, as observed or something in towns and, and, and cities throughout Northern Ireland. So I think there's a lot positive there that hasn't really been understood that sort of how people have moved from those old um, political identities to more, let's call them consumption identities. Um, really not researched uh, enough, I think.